Evil cannot create anything new, they can only corrupt, is a quote that is attributed to J.R.R. Tolkien, and it's also the number one comment under Amazon's trailer for Lord of the Rings, to let you know how it's going with that trailer release. We're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about the Vanity Fair thing, we're going to talk about the further destruction of Tolkien's legacy, the idea that these people have in their head that they're fixing the Lord of the Rings by ruining it, but we have a sponsor, we're going to transition to them, I'll catch you on the other side. A ton of Americans last month were talking about how their heating bills were up almost $100. This is largely due to the fact that natural gas heating is up 32% this winter as compared to last winter, and heating oil ain't doing much better. This is one of the reasons why I highly recommend stay winter warm. You can get yourself a little mini space heater that's absolutely perfect for small rooms or to supplement your heat. We all got those drafty rooms in our households and it doesn't make sense to crank up the thermostat for every room in the household just to get that one to the temperature where it's comfortable. Go to staywinterwarm.com right now and you can get yourself 50% off this heater. Don't know about you, but I'm not looking forward to lining the pockets of the utility companies this winter and you shouldn't be either the trailer dropped for the lord of the rings tv series on amazon.com their new adaptation their better adaptation their fixing of the tragic mythology that is the lord of the rings and it is tragic in that it is meant to be an alternate prehistory to western europe specifically the united kingdom or what is known as the united kingdom and that means that it's not diverse enough there's not enough minorities in every subgroup of races or species. I don't know what they're actually called in Lord of the Rings. Nerds, tell me in the comments below. And that's a big problem. And in a previous video, we talked about how they were focusing on all the wrong things. You had this actor talking about how excited he was that just like that, there were black hobbits. And now there's black hobbits. And the real thing that you need to be concerned about with this show is is the fact that they're black hobbits. But before we get into the Vanity Fair thing, before we get into the comical photos of the cast, we gotta get into this trailer because it is the essence of generic, and considering this is a half a billion dollar series, that's pretty bad. Haven't you ever wondered what else is out there? There's wonders in this world beyond our wandering. So obviously you need to take note of the fact that there is narration to open this trailer, which is an obvious thing that happens in a bunch of different trailers. It's really annoying right before it cuts to silence. Again, you can cut trailers in a new, interesting, innovative way. You keep talking about how you're fixing the old, stinky series written by J.R.R. Tolkien, so why don't you do something different from the trailer rather than the dramatic duh, cut to silence, cut to black, and then roll into the trailer. Also, take note of the fact that this is being narrated by a lady. I don't know if you know this, but the Lord of the Rings needs more strong women characters than Lord of the Rings strong women characters, strong women Lord of the Rings strong women characters. <laughs> And there's your little girl character, maybe that's Frodo Baggins, recast, reskinned as a different gender. Honestly, I have no idea, and the reason I have no idea, and the reason it's possible, even though this is a prequel series to The Lord of the Rings that takes place well before The Lord of the Rings, is because these people have shown such disregard and utter disdain for the source material. Maybe they do have a Frodo that's somewhere in there, in the mix, in the past. Maybe they're just sort of like, whatever, who, who cares? They definitely don't care about the fans and about the mythology of Tolkien, so I wouldn't put it past them if this little girl was actually Frodo, even though narratively she's probably going to serve the same function as Frodo, therefore she literally will be Frodo, but I think her character name might actually be Frodo. Let me know in the comments below if you think they would go that far. Now, of course, after the narration, after the cuts of black, and then the reveal of our new Frodo, trans Frodo, gender hobbit Frodo, we end up cutting to vistas and blahs, and we see, like, these waterfalls and some stuff from the movies, which is from the books, and it's like, blah, and the waterfall looks like crap, it looks like terrible CGI waterfall, but that's okay, because, you know, the effects are probably not rendered fully by now, and if I want to be as fair as possible to the show, I will say there's a lot of times we see bad CGI in trailers that is significantly improved by the release date this is scheduled for release so i'm not going to beat them up 
too much on the fact that the waterfall looks like crap in this half a billion dollar show in this trailer. But I will say, I thought this was the Prince of Persia right here. I thought this person was from the Prince of Persia game, the original PlayStation game for the Prince of Persia, PS2, uh, Prince of Persia Sands of Time. And it turns out to be a strong woman. Okay, look, I know you're going to say, it's Sean, you're nitpicking. I know you're going to say, Sean, you're being a jerk. You're being mean to the series. You're being mean to the Amazon Corporation that put half a billion dollars into this. But I just want to point out that she's wearing armor while climbing up a mountain made of ice with a dagger over a waterfall. Is that really the most practical thing to do? Remember, we're updating this. We're getting rid of the fantasy of Tolkien and we're adding in modern politics and all that. Maybe, just maybe, not a doctor, not a scientist. You don't wear metal that gets really cold when it's cold because it's metal over water, which makes it more difficult to swim when you're climbing up a mountain with the dagger. But I guess this is supposed to evoke images and make me feel like, oh, that's a strong, badass woman. That's the lady hero of this. That's probably the new trans's Orlando Bloom equivalent. And I know somebody's going to say, Sean, this takes place whale before. But you know what? Don't matter. That's Orlando Bloom right there. And I know he has a character name. I, I know what it is. Relax. Orlando Bloom. <laughs> I think this is the Black Elf, so maybe this is the new Orlando Bloom, and maybe I was just wrong about that other person. Maybe that other person is Vigo Mortensen's character. I know it's Aragorn. Calm down. Calm everybody, everybody relax. I'm just having fun with the trailer. It's super generic. There's not a lot you can get from it. It's just dramatic shots like, blam, with paws everywhere. This guy's pulling an arrow. He looks like a renegade elf. And again, it's just weird for him to be an elf. And I know they are very proud of the racialized casting of these shows and all that. But the thing is, if this takes place before The Lord of the Rings, and I know it probably is not in the same continuity as the movies of Lord of the Rings, there's like no minority elves. The elves are all depicted in Tolkien's books, and yes, I got the books on Audible, as super white and fair-skinned and tall and thin. They look a certain way. That is the mythology of Tolkien. There are other peoples that you could do stories on in the Lord of the Rings universe that are dark-skinned. They're just not interested in doing that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that CGI thing looks absolutely terrible, but to be fair, to be fair to the Amazon show, again, the effects could not be rendered all the way yet, and on top of that, let's be honest, the Hobbit CGI did not look good, and this is one of the reasons why the Lord of the Rings original movies hold up, is because they couldn't do all that stuff with the computers, so they didn't try, and they actually did practical effects. Again, half a billion dollars, can I get some practical effects? Can I get some love and craft in this show, rather than people who are obviously trying to bastardize Tolkien's material, who want to lecture everybody who likes Tolkien's material, the actual fans, not me, by the way, the people who read the book, the people in the UK who have rated The Lord of the Rings the most influential book in the entire nation. Maybe maybe just try a little bit harder if you're going to vandalize the characters of this to get some of the effects and everything to look decent before you release the teaser. <laughs> I think that woman is literally saying Yas Queen right there as she's raising up her hands. Now, to be fair, I have no knowledge of whether or not this is the same character featured in the Vanity Fair thing because of the lighting and because I'm not really looking that much and because I watched this trailer on my phone and because I refuse to turn up my brightness and because I don't care that much. But yeah, that's really some weird looking stuff for the dwarf lady queen. By the way, the dwarfs have this person as their queen, but we'll talk about that later. Look, I'm going to go into the casting a little bit later, but honestly, I don't want to go into that too much. I just want to talk about how generic this trailer looks. Now, I know a lot of fantasy basically apes off Lord of the Rings, so Lord of the Rings can feel generic based on the repetition that it has in other stories. But this trailer is on another level. It's all blahs and all lame text. A new adventure begins before the Ring of Power. Blah, 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 generic text related to the Tolkien universe. There's just no love in this. There's no feeling in it. There's nothing. There's nothing of substance. Nothing you can wrap your arms around and say this is a Lord of the Rings property. It feels just so empty and hollow. And again, for $500 million, half a billion dollars, I wouldn't be trying to produce anything that's that hollow. <laughs> So 
So it's Lord of the Rings, Legend of Shang-Chi, and the Ten Rings of Power. That is the story that we're watching unfold. That will be out September 2nd. And needless to say, the internet's reaction to this was no bueno. I already told you what the top comment was on this. I'm going to put it up on screen. I read it in the beginning. Just go back if you missed that part. And yeah, it's just hilarious that this is the reaction to something that they put so much money in. But honestly, it is a well-deserved reaction. Because as we talked about in a previous video, and I talked about in greater detail in that video, Tolkien was against this idea that becoming more modern going forward in time is the equivalent of going forward in terms of progress. So the idea that they would add in all these future politics into the casting and into the story, by the way, because you know the characters are going to be your modern, strong female characters that have no character flaws, is just contrary to everything that he had on an ideological level, everything that he believed about history, and it's honestly shameful. And on top of that, The Lord of the Rings is a very distinctly Catholic story, to the point where J.R.R. Tolkien said that he went back after it was written and made sure to punch up the Catholic messaging in his story so it fits his vision. So you know, we're gonna have some LGBTQ, double X, I, I, trans characters all over this show, even though that is not aligned with his values because this isn't about reflecting Tolkien's stories and adapting it and doing something out of love of the source material. This is about updating it. This is about fixing it because, you know, The Lord of the Rings is one of the most intellectual books in the United Kingdom, but it doesn't reflect the modern progressive politics. How are we going to live in a world where Lord of the Rings doesn't have commentary about President Donald Trump? Where were you January 6th? I was in Middle Earth when the Republic fell and The Lord of the Rings needs to reflect that. You know it's going to be in there. You know it's going to happen. You know there's going to be that episode that's all about the evil orange man. And in the Lord of the Rings universe, maybe they will just create a race of evil orange men. Now look, the trailer is what it is. It's hollow. It's empty. It doesn't tell us anything about the series. It's got those stupid balls. It looks like it was crafted in a laboratory. And it is, among all other things, generic. However, the casting photos look ridiculous and these are the photos that the lord of the rings people the people behind the series chose to give to vanity fair as an exclusive so this is what they want to highlight so i just want to show you a few of them and we'll talk about each and every one and in reality we're not even going to talk about them that much because the photos kind of say it all so the first photo we have is the prince of persia lady looking directly into the camera nothing really interesting it just says she comes up for air meh lame lame then we have her in armor, and she is the commander of the Northern Armies. Again, same Prince of Persia lady, but at least you know she's a commander. Strong, strong woman. Strong, strong, strong commander. And there's an explosion behind her. It's like Michael Bay made this shot, except she's actually in armor. That's not a bikini. Michael Bay, you know what you like to do. And then we have the Dwarven Princess Diza, who I'm sure by the end of this will become a queen in her own right. And yeah, this is just speaks for itself. You, you know why she's cast in the show. It's so that they can put her out in press releases like this. You know that she's not going to have any of the hangups or the problems of the dwarves. The dwarves, by the way, are like obsessed with treasure. I know that for a fact, and I'm not even up to date on all my Tolkien lore. And they got all kinds of problems associated with that. But in this show, I guarantee you, this princess is going to be like, listen, dwarves, why are you so obsessed with treasure? She'll probably be a communist, too. She's like, you're obsessed with capitalism. We need to have a communist dwarves revolution. And then she'll become a queen and probably white supremacist elves will kill her. I, I don't even know. And then there's this guy. And he's an elf that looks like Grey Worm from Game of Thrones. Look, there's a great commentary video. It's from The Critical Drinker on the casting of this and why the actual faithful casting matters to the show and how you can do the lore of the lord of the rings if you wanted more diverse in terms of our times people in the series you just do the unexplored or less explored realms of the tolkien universe so i'm not really going to make so much commentary about the racial makeup of these people i just want to point out that they're casting these people they're not focusing on the story they're not focusing on being faithful in their adaptation but they want credit for it they're hyped about it they put out all this information and their leeches their followers in their media the legion just came out in defense of them honestly before the attacks even came out before people noticed what they were putting out, they were already like how all the sexist, racist, sexists are attacking this great show that's a step in the right place for diversity. 
How dare they do go talking blah blah blah. But honestly, those videos exist. They exist across the internet. You can find them the second there's an update about this show. What I want to talk about is just how generic it all looks. How it's nothing distinct about it. It doesn't give you the feel of the Lord of the Rings. Think about the narrative choices that were made in the Lord of the Rings movie. Think about how bright and blown out everything was when they were in the Shire. Think about the distinct look of the elves and where they lived. And how that was reflected not just in the scenery, but also in the lighting conditions. And everything associated that you don't really pay attention to, but your brain notices. That lets you know where you're at. There was actually care and craft in bringing Tolkien's world to life. This looks like any other fantasy series or any other action movie. It's not even very distinctly fantasy based on the trailer. So there's just nothing to this right now. Now, of course, it could be good. It could be a great series. Sure, fine. There have been bad trailers and good series and good movies. There's also been great trailers and terrible movies and terrible series. I understand that. But there's just not a lot here. The word of the day is generic. And you know what's worse than the woke casting? You know what's worse than the writers patting themselves on the back for casting minorities in these roles while simultaneously calling the fans racist? Being bland, being forgettable. And that's what this looks like. All we're going to see is a less interesting to look at version of the sets that we saw in the Peter Jackson movies with a bunch of member berries sprinkled in. I've already seen some locations that I think exist for the sole purpose of saying, hey, remember this? We're in the before time, so we're going to go visit this. Remember this? Remember Lord of the Rings? Remember that thing that you actually like that you could be watching? Remember this? Remember Lord of the Rings? So yeah, while I will give it a couple episodes, while I will give it a chance because I'm a fair-minded person, I have no hopes for it. I'm not looking at anything in this trailer or in the press about it, about how they want to make it like Game of Thrones, which is ridiculous, and getting excited. It seems like this is the destruction or a disassembly or deconstruction of J.R. Tolkien's work, and it is made in spite of him, in spite of the source material, not in favor of the source material. On top of that, I just want to close out by saying this. There are people that write fantasy books that have not been adapted yet. That could be the next Lord of the Rings style franchise on the screen, even though it's not going to be in the books because the books are the books. HBO actually took a risk and adapted one of those. And for at least four seasons, it was one of the best shows ever put on TV. And even when the show went downhill in terms of quality, the effects, a lot of the acting and a lot of the stuff around the show separate from the writing was still fantastic. Those source materials exist. You can go adapt those. You can go put money in those. If you're Jeff Bezos and you got all the money in the world because you're Amazon, then you can adapt something like that and make that work. You don't have to vandalize the Lord of the Rings. And by your very nature of you trying to recast and fix the Lord of the Rings to fit your modern narrative lets me think that you don't have confidence in anything written by minorities. You don't have confidence in things written about minorities. You know that this is the peak high fantasy and it's not the white supremacist system. It's the fact that J.R.R. Tolkien is the best. He's the GOAT and you're just not. Now that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. If you liked the video, you show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social media, support me via the support links in the description box. This has been me talking about the trailer and the images from the Lord of the Rings. Till next time.